Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church to our digital worship service on this first Sunday of the Lenten season. We're so glad that you have chosen to join us for these holy and sacred moments together. And we hope that as we join together in this way in worship, that in everything that we do, you will know and you will sense the closeness of God's Spirit and that you will be attentive to the voice of God's Spirit in your own life so that what you hear in this service, you may put into action and apply it in your own life wherever you go from this space today. There are a couple of things that are going to help us all as we get going today. The first is to remind you that we really love to know that you have worshipped with us. And the only way that we can know that is when you go along and fill out our digital attendance pad. You will find that by going to mumconline.com forward slash here. Click on the link. It's going to take you to a Google form. Fill that out and let us know that you worship with us today. We will really appreciate that. I also want to direct your attention to the comments feed in this uh, screen that you're looking at us on. Please, please, please go ahead, say hello to one another in there. You might think that there's no one else here. No one's going to say hello back. A triple dog dare you to give it a go. Say hello to one another. Share the peace of Christ. That is how we build community together. And if you have a prayer request today, please type it into that comment section. There will be someone praying for you in real time. As soon as you hit send, someone will be praying for you as they read it. We encourage you to go ahead and do that. Did you know that even in the midst of Lent, that each Sunday is like a little tiny Easter in our service? And so as we light the Christ candle today, we know that Christ is with us in our despair and our desert moments, but Christ is with us in celebration and in the resurrection. And so today we say, welcome, light up Christ, fill this place with hope and love. And we also say, peace be with you, because we know the peace of Christ is abounding in this time. So Amen. peace be with you. And also with you. Good morning. We are in the season of Lent on our journey to the cross and then ultimately the celebration of Easter. This morning I want to do when I survey the wondrous cross followed by fill my cup Lord which mentions Jesus as the bread of life. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning, church. As we're preparing our hearts for this season of Lent, will you join me in this moment as we affirm what we believe, not only during this season of Lent, but at all times? The words will be on the screen. This is the good news which we have received in which we stand and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins was buried and was raised on the third day. He appeared first to the women and then to Peter and the 12, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. By the power of the Spirit, Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross, reconciles all things to God. Amen. Hi everybody, in today's scripture reading, we're going to be hearing from the book of Mark. And in the scripture reading, it's going to describe to us how Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan by his cousin John. It's also going to describe to us about how Jesus went into the wilderness and was tempted. Both of these things are marking or talking to us or describing how Jesus is preparing himself in his heart for the beginning of his ministry. Now, remember, ministry is when we go out and we talk to people about God and Jesus. That's what it means when we talk about ministry. So Jesus was preparing his heart. This week also marks the beginning of Lent. And Lent is a time that we prepare our hearts to get ready for the celebration of Easter. So as we move into this time of Lent, it's a really good time to talk to your family members, your grandparents, your parents, your friends, and your Sunday school teachers about how do they prepare their hearts for the celebration of Easter? Do they pray? Do they read their Bibles? Do they, do they talk to friends and family more about the teachings of Jesus? It's a really good time to ask those questions about how can we prepare to get ready for Easter. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to prepare our hearts and minds for the celebration of Easter. It's in your son's name that we pray, amen. And now we're going to find out how we can live out our calling memorial with just three things. This is the first week of Lent, which means in five weeks, we will be having our free gift to the community, our annual community Easter celebration. That's when we join with the congregation at First Pres, close down North 6th Street and put on a free street fair celebrating Easter. We have over a thousand people come each year and they have lunch, play games, hunt for eggs, and learn about the Easter story. With this being such a big event, we need all hands on deck to help love show up. There are two ways you can help. First, visit mumconline.com slash Lent to find the sign up link to let us know that you want to help with this event. RSVPing now helps us know how many of you are going to help and lets you select what job you'd like to do. Now we're also going to need Easter eggs, like tons of eggs, stuffed with candy and treats, but not chocolate because it melts and gets messy. You can pick up empty eggs in the worship spaces or in the parton center that you can take home and fill on your own. 
or you can purchase plastic eggs, stuff them, and donate them to the church. Or maybe you have a small group that would like to get together and fill some eggs. We already had the Gale Shave Circle gather to stuff eggs last week. So get over to mumconline.com slash Lent and sign up to help at the festival. And grab a bag of empty eggs or buy some yourself and help us with our Easter egg supply. Remember, the festival is Saturday, March 23rd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. just outside on 6th Street. Now, this coming Wednesday begins our Wesley Wednesday Dinner and Lessons. This is our Lenten time of community and study together. Dinners begin at 5 p.m. in Maxwell Hall and are catered by Chef Mike Gass. They are a $10 suggested donation per person. We do need you to RSVP for each dinner you plan to attend. We only have 50 slots for meals, so please be sure to RSVP as soon as possible and do that for each week you plan to attend dinner. Now, there's no limit to the number of people who can join us for the lessons after dinner. If you can't make it to dinner, you can still join us at 6 p.m. in Maxwell Hall for our lessons on Wesley's Means of Grace, like worship and hymns, scripture, prayer and sacraments, and community. Child care will be offered during each lesson. You can request child care on your dinner RSVP or by contacting the church. Again, you can RSVP by visiting mumconline.com slash Lent or calling the church office. And please remember to RSVP for each meal you plan to attend, not just the first one. And no RSVPs are needed to join us for our lessons at 6 p.m. in Maxwell Hall. You can come participate in those even if you can't make dinner. Recently, a former coworker of mine posted on social media that he had gone into cardiac arrest at his workplace. And luckily, there was a coworker there who knew CPR and was able to help him survive. I'm so glad she knew CPR. And my friend going through that makes me even more thankful that we are all going to have the opportunity next Sunday to learn the new hands-only CPR technique for free here at Memorial. Did you know that February is National Heart Health Month? According to the American Heart Association, receiving any kind of CPR doubles the odds of surviving a cardiac arrest compared with receiving no CPR before emergency medical services arrived. Hands-only CPR, which involves only chest compressions, has emerged in recent years as an alternative to standard CPR. An instructor will be here at Memorial next Sunday, February 25th, to teach this procedure for free to anyone who would like to learn it. Come by Maxwell Hall at 11 a.m. for this free instructional class. Please RSVP to Pastor Rachel or call the church office so we have a head count of who's coming. Learning hands-only CPR could be another way that you could help love show up for someone else. Helping to bring our free community Easter celebration to our community, learning and growing through our weekly dinner and lessons this Lenten season, and learning hands-only CPR to help love show up in our community. These are just three things that you can do to live your calling through Memorial. We come to the time now in our service when we bring our tithes and offerings before God. And every number of weeks, I always return to try and tell you a story of the impact of your giving. Last Sunday morning, we had a State of the Church speech and you heard an awful lot of data and numbers about the impact of our life together here. But maybe it's good just to return to a very simple story. And I want to tell you about the impact of our ministry among our children. You see, what's going on with our children and young people at the minute has got to the point where just a few weeks ago, one of our children, one of our children came up and asked me if she could be baptized. She just wanted, in response to what's going on in the ministry that we're offering to our children, she said, can I be baptized too? Now, of course, I said an immediate yes, and that's going to happen sometime in March. You'll hear more about that in the future. But friends, sometimes it's uh, easy for us to forget about the importance of the spiritual impact that we are having in the lives of the people, young and old, who worship here. And what's going on among our children is a holy work that is calling to those young hearts to the point where one of those children asked me, could they be baptized? And that's the second child to do that in the space of a year. So when you think about the impact of your given, we can talk about how many thousand meals we provided in our community, and we can talk about the difference that we're making in Guatemala and Kenya. But it's also important that we remember that we are having an impact on the lives of the people who gather here in worship. 
We're having a significant spiritual impact in the lives of our children and young people. And that can only happen because you give gifts every week that sustain those ministries year round. So when you give, give joyfully and give generously and give in the knowledge and confidence that your giving has an impact, not just to the far reaches of the world, but right here among the children that you're called to care for. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we do give thanks for your goodness and for all of the work that you do in us and through us and around us. We give thanks that your spirit is calling out to children and having them respond to your invitation to, to be baptised. And we ask that that work would be an ongoing work in this place. Just as we have borne witness to your goodness and your grace for 203 years nearly now, we continue that witness in this day. So would you receive these gifts and these offerings, Lord God? Would you bless them and use them for the building of your kingdom, for the glorifying of your name, so that generations more would continue to hear the good news of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Will you pray with me this morning? Oh Lord, we lift up our souls to you. We place our trust in you, knowing that we follow Christ, your Son, your Beloved, and that as you are well pleased with him, so too do we look to his pleasing holy presence that guides and leads us onto your paths. We know that some things in our pasts are rocky. As youth and adults, we have not always done your will. We dwell on the times when we did not obey, when we went the ways of our own desires rather than living into your love. We give you thanks that you do not turn away from us, that even in the days when waters flooded the earth, you sent a rainbow into the clouds to form an everlasting covenant. You, us, every living creature on this earth are bound together. May we always be reminded of this when we consider the air we breathe, the water we drink, the animals and humans we encounter. We are all your beautiful creation. And God, though we have not always done your will, we look to your son, the one who suffered. For since all of us are together, we are all brought to you, God. By his baptism, death, and resurrection, we are washed clean and made new in your spirit. And as we walk through these coming days of Lent, let us give thanks to the Lord who allows good and fruitful things to flourish in our lives. For those of us who are in our desert days, who are walking a path that is filled with temptation, despair, and snares, we call on you. Be with us, be near, let your presence be made known in even our darkest times. Lead us in your truth and teach us, for you are the God of our salvation. May we wait on you all day long. Lord, for those who are hurting, for those who are mourning the loss of precious loved ones, especially here in our congregation, for those who are struggling with the question of why, may they be reminded that you are good and upright, that you never leave nor forsake us, and all of your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. May we seek your covenant promise in that. And Lord, in you we trust, and we reiterate that trust in the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. Hear the word of God. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. 
And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just a couple of years ago in summer 2022, Margaret, Eva, Jackson and I had the opportunity of a lifetime to enjoy 10 days on the continent of Europe. We bought ourselves railway passes that would help us hop from one place to the other. And in the space of just 10 short days, we either stopped off or we passed through the nations of France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, Italy. We visited the cities of Paris and Amsterdam and Zurich and Pisa and Rome. We saw everything that you could imagine we would have wanted to see in those places. We ate all of the foods that you could imagine we wanted to eat in those places. We had the times of our lives and we squeezed so much in to a short period of time. Now in a way, that's actually pretty biblical in that we were following after the example of the gospel writer Mark. Because you might have noticed in the reading that we shared from today, from Mark chapter one, he actually packs so much from the life of Jesus into a short amount of space. Seven verses. That's all we had today. Mark chapter 1, verses 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And that's the style of Mark, the gospel writer. You see, his gospel is 16 chapters long. It is a no-nonsense, straight-up storytelling approach to communicating the good news about Jesus Christ, who was the Son of God. Now, the reading that we shared in today happens, as you know, right at the very start of his overall story. And it covers three shorter stories within the space of those seven verses. Three shorter, significant stories from Jesus's life. These stories are so significant because they actually set the scene for the entire 16 chapters that Mark is about to cover. It's, he's going to be telling us about how Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the one who came to change the world and who did change the world. And these three short stories specifically help us to set the scene at the very beginning of another Lenten season. Because in these stories, we see and we experience Jesus as the absolute exemplar of what it is to be obedient and to surrender to God, who is our creator. How so, you might be asking, and that's a really good question, because over the next few minutes, I'm gonna try and answer it. In the first story, we encounter the baptism of Jesus, a moment of true significance in his entire journey. In the first eight verses of the gospel, Mark has introduced the big story. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then he has introduced us to John the Baptist. He has told us a little bit about John's ministry. And he has noted at the end of that section in verse eight that, that there's actually one coming who is going to baptize with the Spirit. Well then, in our reading, that very one just shows up at the River Jordan. Jesus comes out of Nazareth and, and goes to this place where John is calling those who are listening to him to a repentance from their sins and to a baptismal moment. 
And we can see this obedience in Jesus' life and in Jesus' ministry. We can see this obedience in the very fact that he himself offers his repentance and goes forward for baptism. Now, how can we tell that? Well, as you know, probably as well as I do, we often refer to Jesus as the one who was sinless in this life. The only one who could ever have met and who did meet all the requirements of the law. Jesus was one who was without sin. And yet, here he was, offering himself in obedience to the baptism that John was offering, offering himself in obedience to the repentance that John was calling his listeners to. Jesus is the exemplar of obedience and surrender to God. He didn't have to do that at all, but he did. In that moment of baptism, as we read, it's just a couple of verses long, John tells us that Jesus goes down into the water, is baptized by John, and as he's coming up out of the water, he has this vision of the heavens above being ripped open and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. We're also told that Jesus hears a voice from heaven saying those words of affirmation. You are my beloved child. In you, I am well pleased. This is a word of affirmation that is uh, is speaking to Jesus of his very own identity assuring him that that he is the Son of God, that he has this identity as God's beloved child that is going to strengthen him and empower him for all that is to come. This baptism is a significant moment because it is a reminder of who Jesus is and how he is beloved of God the Creator. And he has become obedient to this baptism. He has surrendered to this call in this moment. John, or Mark then takes us from John's baptism. Immediately, he says, Jesus was thrust into the wilderness by the Spirit. Now, I hope that you notice that, that the very same Spirit that descends upon Jesus in that beautiful moment of baptism is the same Spirit that then thrusts him out into the wilderness. I want to make sure you understand what that word means when we use the word thrust. It's been likened to a bouncer throwing out an unruly uh, clubber from the nightclub. So it's this idea of absolutely being thrown into the wilderness. So this spirit who has affirmed the belovedness of Jesus now has thrust him into the wilderness. Now, biblically speaking, the wilderness is a place that denotes a season of barrenness, or a season of of testing and isolation. And Mark records no opposition from Jesus whatsoever when he is thrust into the wilderness. There is no resistance on his part. In fact, again, as the exemplar of obedience and surrender to what is going on with Jesus, he goes with no complaint. Jesus embodies what it is to trust God entirely. Let me say that again. Jesus embodies what it is to trust God entirely. I mean, that's why he can be thrust into the wilderness. That's why he can endure a 40-day long season of fasting. That's why he can face all that that season in the wilderness would bring him through, because he has surrendered to God He is obedient to God and he has been assured in the verses just before of his belovedness in God. You see, being beloved of God is what enables obedience and surrender in our lives with God. And in this reading that we shared in today, it is actually what empowers Jesus to do then what comes next. That is the ministry that he was called to. Because after this season of testing in the wilderness, the very next thing that Mark tells us at the end of our short seven verses in which so much is packed is that Jesus moves then into his time of ministry. 
a ministry of proclaiming the good news that the time is near and the kingdom has come. A ministry of calling people who are listening to him to repent and to believe this good news. Now here's the thing. At the very start of that section, Mark is very careful to tell us that Jesus moved into his ministry after John had been arrested. Why might that be significant? Well, it's significant because it tells us that Jesus knew that the work that he was about to engage in was a work that might get him into some further trouble. This was a work that would endanger Jesus going forward because it was what had got John arrested already. Jesus knows that his ministry is going to take him to places and have him saying things in front of people who might not then want the best for him afterwards. He knows that there is danger and yet carries on regardless because he is the exemplar of obedience and surrender. And he can be that way because he knows that he is beloved of God. Through all of these things, Jesus is enabled to live into the calling that God has placed upon him in his life. He is able to be surrendered entirely and utterly obedient to the call of God. Why is this all significant for you and for me on the very first Sunday of Lent? Well, friends, I think you probably know as well as I do that Lent is a season of surrender and obedience in our lives. It's a season when we are called to return unto God in a more intentional and a more focused way. We're invited into a season of prayer and of fasting and of giving more of ourselves to our relationship with God. This is supposed to be a season that does a work of prepare, preparation in us. A work that prepares us in a spiritual sense for what it is that we are being called to next. As Christians, we understand that it's important to take this season each year. To take stock of where our spiritual lives are at. To think about what God is calling us to. And it's important in this season that we model that same sense of surrender and obedience that we can see in Jesus who is the very Son of God and who is the exemplar of both of those things. At the beginning of this Lenten season, friends, I believe that we, the church, are called to these six weeks of introspection, of deeper prayer, and of sacrifice and fasting as a means of opening ourselves to the closeness of God's presence in our lives as a means of preparing ourselves for what God is calling us to next. And so in this very first week of Lenten season for 2024, I'm inviting you to that journey. Now, you might have made a commitment to, to give something up for this season. I, I applaud that. that is, that's an obedience that all of us can be called to. Or you might have entered into this season saying to yourself, I'm going to observe this extra discipline in this time as a means of opening myself up to God. And again, I applaud you for that. Or, honestly, you might not have thought of Lent at all. It might just be a season that we talk about on Sunday mornings. And if that's the case for you, I want to make a specific invitation to you to enter into this holy season as one in which your sense of spiritual alertness to the work of the Spirit in your own life might be heightened by entering in to a more focused time of prayer or fasting or devotion. You see, Jesus still calls us to follow in his way, which is the way of surrender and obedience. Jesus also calls us to continue in this journey of surrender and obedience in the context of our knowing that we each are beloved of God. Because in our own baptisms, that same grace, that same voice which spoke those words of affirmation to Jesus, they were spoken to us too. And so beloved child of God, let me speak to you today. In this season of Lent, 
May each of us turn our hearts and our minds and our lives once more to God. May we find in God the strength and the grace and all that we need to live into this season of focused obedience and surrender. So that the places and spaces that God is calling us to travel to next, we might do that with a sense of our belovedness and our calledness to it. So in this Lenten season, open up your hearts and your minds to the prompting of God's Spirit. You are the beloved of God, and you are called to follow in the way of Christ, the way of obedience and surrender. May it be so in my life, and may it be so in your life too. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, at the end of each of our digital sermons, we always have a couple of questions that are uh, there to help you think through the things that we've just been talking to. And I really want to commend these questions to you too. Maybe you could take them this first week of Lent as questions that help you in your devotions. Maybe take a moment to journal with them each day, listening for God's voice and using them as a prompt to, to write down what it is that you're hearing. Here are this week's questions. Friends, that brings us to the close of our service for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We always invite you to come join us again next week in this digital service. It goes out at 11 a.m. Sunday mornings on our YouTube channel every single week. We would love to see you there. We also, if you're close to Fernandina Beach, we would love to see you here in person. And you have three opportunities to join us every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. here in the sanctuary, 9.30 in Maxwell Hall, or 11 a.m. back here in the sanctuary. We would love to welcome you and greet you in person if you are able to join us. In the meantime, I want to offer you this benediction. During January, we move through the season of dynamite prayer and several times in worship, we, uh, we put up the benediction that we were going to say together. I really want to continue that season by, by sharing that benediction frequently in the weeks and months ahead. And so we're going to say this benediction together. The words will come up on screen and I invite you to say them along with me. We join together now. And so gracious God, by your Holy Spirit, would you grant us courage to follow Christ and to know him more, boldness in inviting others to do the same, and commitment in our connection to one another so that we might be a beacon of Christ's hope as we serve our community and world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.